Hey guys, Level Cap here. It's been a while since I've had jet gameplay on my channel. In fact, I used a lot of jets back in Battlefield 3 and just didn't really transition over much for BF4. Well, I decided to get back into it and I figured, you know what, if I'm going to relearn how to fly jets in BF4, I may as well pick a new control scheme. I was never a huge fan of the way I had my control set up in BF3. I just got used to it and I decided to relearn how to fly with entirely new controls. I am by no means a top tier jet pilot, but throughout this video I'll be covering some basic tactics that'll allow you to do exceptionally well should you follow them, and if you practice them continuously, you can get to a top tier. I even go 45-0 and 0 in the last video here just because I follow some basic tactics, and I'm still working on getting good with my jet piloting skills. The control scheme is something that I've still yet to master. Now obviously this control setup only applies to PC, but my main philosophy behind it is maximum maneuverability. I don't want to rely on dragging the mouse for anything that requires dodging or getting on somebody's tail. So what I've done is I've bound my WASD keys to all my main movement controls. W and S control my pitch up and pitch down, and A and D control my roll. This allows me to do 90% of my flying with WASD, and then allow my precision aiming to be done entirely on my mouse, so I've doubled up pitch up and pitch down on my mouse up and down movement, and then I've also bound yaw left and yaw right to my mouse. So I can now aim the plane with my mouse just like I would uh, in infantry combat, and then most of my fast movement is bound entirely to the keyboard. And admittedly, it took me a while to learn this control scheme. I had to go into some test ranges, practice flying around, try and flying under bridges, until I got comfortable enough that I was willing to test it out against other pilots. Now again, I'm certainly not at a high skill level with my piloting skills right now, but as I practice and practice and practice, it allow me to do better and better. Again, the main reason why I was able to have such good games while flying at a pretty mediocre level is that I just used some of the basic jet piloting philosophies, and also I wasn't up against top tier pilots. Flying aircraft in Battlefield is an entirely different situation than infantry combat aside from the control scheme. If you're up against a good jet pilot, a really good jet pilot can win every single dogfight hands down. Whereas with infantry combat, sometimes you could get lucky as a mediocre infantry player and kill a better player than you. With jet combat, it is very unlikely that you're going to win a jet duel against a superior pilot. Now doing strafing runs with jets in Battlefield 4 is something that's a lot of fun, but it also requires a lot of precision and skill to be good at. However, staying alive for longer periods of time is something that is more reliant on strategy rather than skill. So let's talk about some of the strategies we can employ to stay alive longer so you can actually practice your strafing runs and your bombing runs. Countermeasures are your first tool for staying alive. Flying a jet is basically like attacking and retreating constantly. Your countermeasures will keep you alive during your attack runs, and when you retreat, you get into a safe zone where usually the enemy cannot lock onto you. If it's a ground-based lock-on threat, it's usually much easier to escape, especially if you know where the lock-on is coming from. Being in a jet gives you improved mobility over all ground targets and even helicopters, so if you get taken out by tanks, uh, AA tanks, or helicopters, there's usually something you could have done about it, so it's almost always an error on your part. And there's a lot of basic things you can do to avoid death from ground targets. The first thing on the list is attack from a high angle. Rather than coming in at a low angle where a lot of people are already looking, people usually aren't staring straight straight up at the sun. The higher the angle, the better chance you have of coming in undetected. If you're a really skilled pilot, you can even potentially attack your target with the sun behind you, making you a harder target to spot. But don't forget that just spotting or hitting the Q button will light you up regardless. The added benefit is that if you attack from straight down, ground targets really don't have a lot of cover they can go behind unless they're hiding underneath a bridge or inside of a building. Attacking from above versus helicopters means it's going to be almost impossible for them to get an angle on you. Helicopters can definitely take you out if you attack them from straight on, but if you come from high above, they basically can't aim straight up in the air without crashing. However, this does not apply to scout helicopters that have an engineer sitting on the side with a lock-on rocket launcher. This will basically allow them to engage you at any angle. Now, once you complete a bombing run, often it makes sense to pull up at a steep angle and try and get as much altitude again so you can do another bombing run. While you're going up in the air, you want to be looking around, either from your cockpit or switch to the outside view and get the rear view so you can kind of see what's going on behind you while you're setting up for your next bombing run. Spotting as much as possible helps out, and this will also help you try and figure out where your biggest threats are. The AA tank is something you want to avoid at all costs. 
A good anti-aircraft tank driver will try and hide from you, and when you get too close, he'll basically open up with everything, killing you before you have a chance to get out of there. It's certainly possible to take out an anti-aircraft tank, but it should be done with extreme caution, and definitely not if there's other threats around. Jets, of course, are a much bigger threat than the anti-aircraft tank because they have your same mobility. So if there's any jets around, you want to deal with them before you even start to worry about the ground targets. Now, say you're not the best jet pilot around, but you've got an enemy jet on your tail and you're pretty sure you can't win this dogfight. Well, you can always try and retreat to your home base, make sure the enemy jet is spotted somehow, and basically the automated AA gun at your home base will either take them out or scare them off. Also, flying low near your home base or captured targets will provide opportunity for friendlies to lock on to the enemy jet chasing you so definitely rely on your team or your home base to deal with enemy attackers now if you do get caught up in a dogfight and you want to try and fight it out the most useful thing to know is that your optimum turn speed is 313 so the little speedometer that you see on the side of your user interface if you can get that number around to 313 uh, anywhere in the near vicinity will allow you to turn as fast as possible the stealth jets also turn faster than the attack attack jet, so keep that in mind, especially if you're engaging in a dogfight and you're an attack jet, it might not be in your best interest. Now as for the rest of it, there's a lot of advanced jet fighting tactics, in fact the skill gap with jet piloting is probably a lot higher than the skill gap with infantry combat, and it's something that I would definitely like to get into, but I'm just not quite at that skill level yet. Hopefully someday, and uh, I'll keep practicing with Battlefield 4 jets and sharing with you what I learned. But even if you employ these basic strategies, you should be able to do well, and especially if you're unchallenged in the air, you can absolutely tear it up in the uh, attack jet versus ground targets. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.